Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a French science fiction movie, called Lucy. The movie begins with Lucy, a young American studying in Taipei, Taiwan. Outside the hotel, she is asked by her new boyfriend, Richard, to deliver a briefcase to someone named Mr. Jang. However, Lucy does not immediately want to help him because she does not know what is in the briefcase. Despite being offered 500 US dollars, she refuses to do anything for him, but Richard suddenly cuffs her wrist to the handle of the briefcase, leaving her no choice. She then enters the hotel and tells the receptionist that she wants to meet Mr. Jang. After she gives her name to the clerk, Richard is suddenly shot and killed outside. At the same time, a group of thugs come out of the elevator and force Lucy to go up with them. It turns out that Lucy is taken to Mr. Jang's room, where she sees many bloodied corpses on the hotel floor, causing her to vomit. Shortly after, Mr. Jang comes out and calls a man on the phone to translate for Lucy. He writes down a number on a piece of paper which is the code to open the briefcase. However, he walks to the next room and asks his men to arm themselves with guns and shields, while forcing Lucy to open the briefcase. Inevitably, Lucy opens the briefcase which contains four plastic pouches filled with a blue powder. Mr. Jang returns to the room while his men bring a drugged up man to sit in front of Lucy and force him to snort some of the blue powder. As a result, the man briefly convulses and starts laughing madly, so Mr. Jang decides to shoot him to death. He then offers Lucy a job, which Lucy refuses to do, causing her to be knocked unconscious. Elsewhere, a scientist named Professor Norman is lecturing on his research of the brain capacity in front of hundreds of people. His research shows that humans only use 10% of their brain capacity. The only living things that use their brains more than humans do are dolphins which can use 20% of their brain capacity, allowing them to map their location and communicate with sonar waves. Back to Lucy, who wakes up in a hotel room. She is surprised to see a bandage on her stomach, while Mr. Jang's men come in and throw her some clothes for her. After that, Lucy is taken to Mr. Jang, along with three other men. A British man suddenly walks in and explains to them that a bag of the drug called CPH4 had been forcibly sewn into each of their stomachs to transport the drug to Europe. It is believed as a highly valuable synthetic drug and is expected to become the next best-selling drug on the market, so they intend to smuggle it around the world. Long story short, Lucy is held captive and chained in a room, where one of the thugs is attracted to her body and starts kicking her in the stomach, right where the CPH4 was. This causes the drug bag to tear, releasing a large quantity of the drug into her system. Meanwhile, Lucy somehow starts to be thrown all over the room, even up to the ceiling until she falls back to the floor. As all of this happens, Professor Norman explains that if humans can access 20% of their brain capacity, they will be able to control every cell of their own body. If the humans manage to access 40% of their brain capacity, they will be able to control other people's thoughts and manipulate matter as they wish. Afterwards, a man asks him what would happen if humans could access 100% of their brain capacity, and Norman replies that he has no idea. Not long after, Lucy awakens with her eyes glowing blue and sits up straight as if nothing happened. A thug comes into the room and Lucy attempts to tease him, and she succeeds to knock him out. She then takes his gun and walks outside, killing the remaining thugs. She also eats all the thug's food greedily before leaving. Surprisingly, Lucy was shot in the shoulder, but she is can causally get the bullet out without feeling any pain. After that, she travels to the nearby Tri-Service General Hospital after threatening a taxi driver to drive for her. On the way to the hospital, Lucy feels something strange in her body because she is able to hear people's conversations from a distance very clearly. Arriving at the hospital, Lucy can read the signs clearly, as if they were written in English. She then enters the operating room, where the doctors are operating on their patient. However, she shoots the man after looking at the patient's x-ray scans, saying that they will not be able to save him as the tumor in his brain has already spread far enough. Lucy forces the doctor to get the bag of drugs removed from her stomach, while she calls her mother on the phone and says that she feels everything, the space, the air, the rotation of the earth, even accessing the deepest parts of her memories. She also tells her mother that she loves her very much before hanging up the call. At this time, the doctors manage to pull the bag of the drugs and are told by Lucy that it contains CPH4. The doctor then says that natural CPH4 is produced in tiny quantities by pregnant women during their sixth week of pregnancy to provide energy for the fetuses to develop, so he is surprised that Lucy has survived this far. Growing heightened physical and mental abilities, Lucy returns to Mr. Jang's hotel, where he is getting tattoos and facials. She immediately kills his bodyguards and assaults him by stabbing knives in both of his hands. 
Using her newfound abilities, she telepathically extracts the locations of the three remaining drug mules based on images of their plane tickets from his brain. Lucy eventually leaves Mr. Jang screaming in pain. She then goes back to her apartment and meets her roommate, Caroline. She borrows her laptop to research her condition in seconds, and finally finds Professor Norman whose research may be the key to saving her. Lucy immediately contacts him and tells him what she is feeling and experiencing right now, that she has reached up to 20% brain capacity and becomes both ruthless and emotionless. She provides proof of her developed abilities by manipulating electronics, making her appearance on several electronic gadgets in Norman's hotel room. In the end, she plans to meet with him in 12 hours. Before leaving, she prints out a prescription for Caroline, telling her to make some lifestyle changes because of her unhealthy life. The news of Lucy's action at the hospital last night has spread all over the media, so she changes her hair color and style before boarding the flight. At the same time, she also contacts local police captain, Pierre Del Rio, to help her find the remaining three packets of the drug. With that information, the local police manage to catch all the drug mules, and Pierre asks his men to secure them in Paris. During the flight to Paris, Lucy continues her research while typing on her laptop at high speed. Hence, the flight attendant asks her to turn off her laptop, but Lucy asks for a glass of champagne instead. Unfortunately, she starts to disintegrate as her cells destabilize from consuming the champagne. Lucy immediately runs to the bathroom, where her body starts to disappear. To stave off her disintegration, she pulls out the remaining CPH4 and snorts them, restoring herself to normal, but she ends up passing out. A few moments later, Lucy wakes up in a hospital room, with Pierre and several other officers and doctors waiting for her to wake up. She then leaves the room and makes everyone in the hospital faint with a wave of her finger, except for Pierre. She also removes the bullets from Pierre's gun and asks him to take her to where the drug mules were previously secured. During the trip, Lucy uses her power to see everyone's phone signals. After sorting through the signals, she manages to overhear the conversation of G, Mr. Jang's top henchman who is about to go to the hospital where the three drug mules are being secured. Therefore, she takes over Pierre's car and drives manically though the streets. However, G with his armed men have already arrived at the hospital to find the other drug mules. They take them to a room and take the drugs out from their stomachs after killing them. When they want to escape with the drugs, Lucy finally arrives at the hospital. With her brain function at 60%, she moves them around the hall and prevents G from escaping by creating some kind of invisible wall. She eventually retrieves the drugs from him and starts to leave the hospital, while telling Pierre to go with her. Outside, Mr. Jang notices Lucy in a car, so he orders his men to follow her car. Soon, Lucy and Pierre meet Norman and his colleagues at a university, where Lucy starts to reveal everything she knows with her brain power, which now exceeds that of a normal human. Meanwhile, Mr. Jang and his men infiltrate the place and start shooting at the officers. Back in the professor's lab, Lucy discusses the nature of time and life and how people's humanity distorts their perceptions. At her urging, she is intravenously injected with the contents of all three remaining bags of CPH4. Therefore, her brain power goes to 70% and her body changes into a black substance which begins to spread over computers and other electronic objects in the lab, giving Lucy more energy from the matter, and thus giving her extraordinary power. As her brain function continues to increase, she manipulates matter in such a way and erases everything in the lab, leaving the scientists standing in a white space. She also transforms all of the electronic objects into one next-generation supercomputer. On the other side, Mr. Jang and his men are overwhelmed against the police, so he orders G to blow up the door using a rocket launcher. Luckily, Lucy manages to transfer her body thousands of miles to Times Square. She mentally begins a space-time journey into the past using a wave of her hand, starting from early 20th century in New York, to colonial times, even all the way to prehistoric times, and eventually reaching the oldest discovered ancestor of mankind. She shares a moment of calm with the Australopithecus, and the two touch fingertips, sending Lucy all the way to the beginning of time and witnesses the Big Bang. However, Mr. Jang enters the lab and slowly points his gun at Lucy's head. He shoots, but by that point Lucy has reached 100% of her brain capacity and promptly disappears, moving into the space-time continuum. She only leaves her clothes and the black supercomputer behind, while Mr. Jang fires his gun at nothing. Pierre then enters the lab and fatally shoots Mr. Jang. After a while, the supercomputer disintegrates and morphs into a black flash drive which is taken by Professor Norman, thus completing his research all along. Pierre also asks Professor Norman where Lucy is, but his cell phone suddenly sounds and he sees a text message indicating that she is everywhere. The movie ends with Lucy's voice stating that this is what life can do and what must be done with it. 
subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.